I posted two pieces on YouTube, but I said I was on the post. I said I'd talk about these two pieces on this episode. So this is the first piece. All right. This is the first piece. It's a cashmere sweater, V-neck, polo blue label. <sighs> blue elbow patches. And let me double check to make sure because these glasses are dark. And I apologize. I'm wrong. It's a brown. Brown elbow patches. All right. A very dark chocolate brown elbow patches. This, this is a beautiful sweater. Tag says a size large. This is a snug medium. Like a gentleman that's a medium could, could wear this sweater. A gentleman that's a small could wear this sweater. From Hollywood to Soho, we be wearing polo. Knockoffs is a no-no, that's just how we go, though. You got it for the low low, it's probably U.S. Polo. A Beverly Hills Polo, all of that is so-so. In the locks and chevrons, cruise navy and lemon. Round floor and wear on, I'm buying what you sell on. Maui pink and melon, tell them about that rusty. Greetings, and welcome to another edition of Seamless Style. Powered by Polo Ticks and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. This episode, it's episode 142 or 143, something like that. I know we're in that range, 142 or 143. We're inching closer and closer to spring but we're still in pre-spring weather here in here in the great state of north carolina charlotte to be specific um the last couple of days have been mid to high 70s i think it even reached uh low to mid 80s one of these days so, yeah, it's getting hot. It's getting hot outside. But looking at the five and 10 day forecast, there are some quite a few 60 degree days, low to mid 60s. Um, and I expect I expect that even though we're about to hit April, I expect to see a few, you know, mid to high 50 degree days still sprinkled in there because as i stated on the last episode it's pre-spring and it's just the weirdest moodiest weather that there is especially down south but not not inclusive to down south it's it's like that all over during this time of year so i went back into the archives because I wanted to do an episode on suits because I've I've acquired quite a few suits over the past, really over the past year. I've acquired quite a few suits. Um, and and that's attributed to I, I'll be honest, that's attributed to uh to to Theo. Theo has a wonderful uh, collection of suits and just uh you know chopping it up and talking to him the um the way of collecting suits is just um to be honest i'm gonna be honest collecting suits purchasing suits might be just as easy if not easier than collecting sweaters at this point i mean if you don't have a uh, uh, a lane a Ralph Lauren lane that you're restricted to when it comes to suits like for example if you only wear double RL suits then of course you're going to be limited if you only wear purple label suits then of course you're going to be limited but if it's just about having a nice Ralph Lauren suit <sighs> I mean the sky's the limit Ralph Ralph Lauren Lauren Ralph Lauren Polo University Chaps Ralph Lauren Polo Ralph Lauren, Black Label, Purple Label, Double RL. Um, like, there's eight to ten 
eight to ten versions, eight to ten subgenres out there where you can really get, for lack of a better word, get your shit off when it comes to suits for Ralph Lauren. Um, I even kind of take it a step further. If a suit, I tend to wear a 44. I'll do a regular, I'll do a long. If the regular shows up and I need a little more sleeve length, I usually have enough to suffice my needs. Uh, 44 longs tend to be a little bit longer in the body, but if you know, if it's a suit that's, if it's a suit that when I put it on, it's an eight, but I know that if I get that jacket shortened just a little bit, it's going to be a 10 and I'm definitely going to do it. Um, but I'm naturally a 43. If and when I can get my hands on a 43 regular, mwah, I'm in heaven, right? But what I've what I've done is is that I've gotten to the point where if it I'm a natural 43. If it's a 42 and the price is right, I'm a copy. If it's a 44, if it's a 46, and I'm going to show you today a 48 that I purchased. You've seen it before, but now you're about to see it, see it. I'm I'm a copy. If the price is right, the look is immaculate, it's 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 it catches my eye and won't let go, and it's a 48, I'm a copy. And I'll show you exactly how beautiful the suit is once it's tailored to my size. All right. But I went back looking in the archives and I had suit yourself. I had uh suit up um there was another one there was another one so it's already three uh three episodes dedicated to suiting that's fine doesn't matter because this thing is progressive um but no sooner than i did that i was talking to my man mr anderson mr anderson your sweater will be in the mail uh Shortly, I apologize. Just it's been a hectic, hectic weekend, but it's going out. And thank you for your purchase. Um, but I was talking to Mr. Anderson, and he was talking about how he's uh, looking for suits. And I got to thinking, we still have to recognize that 2023 might be the first pre-spring, spring and summer that we're actually able to be outside in in full in a full level of normalcy because even as early as last year being outside there was a lot of people still masked up there were a lot of uh places that still had mask mandates so 2023 is technically the first warm weather year since 2019 that way we, we've been able to go outside and feel normal all right so a lot of us a lot of you me we might be outside a little more than we have in a while so i wanted to do a suiting episode but i wanted i wanted specifics and i did not want to do uh the nine to five grind the corporate grind i didn't want to do that i wanted to do happy hour i wanted to do going to events i wanted to do being outside whatever the case may be all right so that's what we're doing today I have three rigs plus the ensemble I'm wearing makes four looks. All right. Now, this ensemble, this suit was, I want to say the waist was a 38, maybe a 36. I can't remember. Either way, I had to take the waist in a little bit. Uh, it was, um, more of a classic fit in the pants. So I had had the waist taken in. I had to have it tailored to a slim fit. And I went with, and she, it wasn't my idea. It was my tailor's idea. And once she did it with the pins, I was, I was sold. But I went with a hard taper. This is damn near a jogger. I literally have to sit down to take these pants off because of the heel and my foot once I get it over. But the way it sits when I'm standing, it sits about right here, which is perfect. Right above, I like above or middle 
of my ankle bone. This fits like right above and the taper on it, as you can see, it's hard. It's a hard taper, but it looks natural. Standing, walking is it's beautiful. Uh, the weight of it is uh, more of a medium weight, so it's not as heavy as a wool flannel or a tweed suit, but it's it's got some weight to it. So it's definitely pre-spring by um, by May. I have to put this up until the fall. Uh, beautiful, just a beautiful type of plaid pattern, um, neutral tonal colors, you know, well, really no colors, just neutral hues, the charcoal gray with a little bit of blue and some white, but the white is more chalky than anything else. It's not a bright popping white. The suit jacket was a 40, is he, I think it was a 40, um, it was a 44. I'm almost positive it was a 44. It might have been a 46, but I'm almost positive it was a 44, but it's an extra long, an extra long suit jacket. Had it shortened, taken in some, but the sleeves I didn't have to touch. I have very long arms. Um, dual vented, two button or three? Lauren is mostly two when it comes to his suits. This is a Lauren suit. It's two button uh, lined. This is just a this is a great comfortable suit, and I think I paid eighty bucks for it. Now I put another eighty in it, but one hundred and sixty dollars for a Lauren Ralph Lauren suit that looks like this. It's worth it, definitely worth it. Uh, Shanley loafers in the snuff just because I wanted that uh, that same type of touch and fabric. That's uh, similar to the suit again. This is pre-spring, but this is a, a cooler day. All right. This is a cooler day type of suit. Gray socks. They are actually the uh, the martini bear on the, on the socks. Um, but just, you know, neutral hues. I don't have really any pop of color except for the wine here on the Lauren or Ralph Lauren pocket square and the wine in the plaid of this polo blue label ascot. So second week in a row, we went with the ascot look. And the aviator shades, aviator shades for just a boss look, um, just just a great cool weather spring look, pre spring look, cool weather pre spring look. Now, fragrance of this and all ensembles was a tough, tough decision, and you'll see why when you see the three rigs, man, because there were several great ralph lauren fragrances i could have chosen uh ralph's club was in the running purple label was in the running safari was in the running uh cashmere any of the supreme o uh supremes would have worked except for maybe um oud which i still haven't replaced but even if i had it i don't think i would have it wouldn't have it wouldn't have i don't think it would have been in the running but i went with uh the new polo the new polo uh cologne the intense green i went with this fragrance because uh the level of manhood that they that they were able to to liquefy and stuff in this bottle is is just perfect for all three looks and i promise you when y'all see these looks all three looks are different all three looks are completely different but the level of manhood that's, that was in this bottle that, that's in this bottle the grown man, the grown manism that's in this bottle, it, it just ended up being the perfect, the perfect choice uh, for this this uh, this episode. All right. So, without any further ado, man, let's get into this. Y'all ready? Me too. Man, let's go. This first look, we took a staple. We took the Glenn plaid suit and we added whimsical, a whimsical touch to it. Several whimsical touches to it, right? We basically took this Glenn plaid suit and just gave it a fun, whimsical spring uh, vibe to it, all right? Now, let's get something straight and let's get it straight right now. A Glenn Plaid suit is a staple. It's a must have. It's an essential. Whatever word you want to use, you should, if 
if you have multiple suits in your closet, you should have at least one Glenn plaid suit. You just should. Um, if you consider yourself a suit, co a collector of suits or just someone that has a wide array of suits, then Glenn plaid is in your collection. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't consider myself a suit collector. I have quite a few suits. And this is my third Glenn plaid and my second Glenn plaid of this particular hue, all right, which is of, a, of the tan brown flavor. Um, I actually have this one, which is blue label. And I have one that's purple label that is the exact same hue, exact same Glenn plaid pat, uh, Prince of Well check pattern, but it has a uh, subtle blue striping in the Glenn plaid as well, all right? But like I said, what we did here is uh, we just created a, a great look for for outdoor outdoor outing, uh, cocktail party, uh, governor's governor's ball, um, steeplechase, anything outdoors where you know it's kind of warm. It's kind of warm, maybe not blazing hot, but it's kind of warm outside. And maybe you're gonna be outside until the sun goes down you know, 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock or, or even longer. This look works and it's and it fun it's functional and serves its purpose, all right? We'll start at the bottom so you'll get the full gist of, the, of this amazing look here. We started off with a pair of drills, all right? A pair of Esper drills in a Madras pattern. Your typical Esper drills, nothing uh fancy nothing too fancy about these esper drills nothing uh outlandish just a beautiful madras uh madras plaid pattern with the uh esper drill uh aesthetic to it all right suit pants suit pants are pleated they were classic fit they are now a slim fit with the same hard taper as the suit i'm wearing that i described to you in the introduction buttons for braces and loops for belts. Well, we went with braces because again, whimsical look. We went with Madras, uh, Madras bra uh, braces, all right? Madras braces over a white spread collar, a state spread collar dress shirt. I would even, this is not a linen shirt, but just looking at the wrinkles in this shirt, Man, you could do a linen, a white linen shirt, and this, and this one might be just even more popping than what it is right now, because again, that that type of aesthetic, just that fun, whimsical, I'm um, casual, but I mean, I'm rocking a glam plaid. What you, you it's not much you can tell, right? Uh, Madras, uh, Indian Madras patchwork bow tie, all right, by Polo Blue Label as well. The suit jacket, as you can see, Glenn plaid, Glenn plaid pattern all right it's three button it's dual vented all the uh all the traditional bells and whistles all right notch lapels nothing under the collar but we got the collar flipped up because we got a a, a colorful uh sweater over our shoulders right so maybe we rocking this sweater over our shoulders over the course of the day and then we still outside and the temperature drops a little bit not a problem we take our coat off our suit jacket off we put the sweater on we put the suit jacket back on now if you're with your lady maybe she you know they they tend to not always prepare you know now you know the, the more mature women the, the more intelligent women which are the women that watch this show trust and believe me they got their shawl with them all right so you probably won't have to give up your sweater or your or your suit jacket um but if you do then so be it give up the suit jacket but you could take the suit jacket off, put the V-neck sweater on, your co your shirt collar's popping, your bow tie still popping, put it right over the, the braces and put your jacket back on. All right. Now you've uh, conquered the, the cool, brisk uh, night air and you still you still um, whimsical. You still clean. You still fresh to death in your Glenn plaid suit. Now, this look is another fun look, and I can't decide. Maybe you could tell me. I can't decide which look is more casual. Is it the first look or is it this look? And you'll see what I'm talking about when we do the PIP because the, the footwear on this look, 
it's like, damn, is it more casual than the first one? Either way, this look is a vibe. This look is a vibe, is a vibe, is a vibe. Now, this is, I don't know, maybe there's a tennis tournament or a golf tournament or depending on what country you live in, hell, even a cricket, a cricket match. This is a perfect little outfit to go to rock at. You know, you could, uh, uh, man, this is, this is definitely something more off the beaten path as far as events. Uh, this is definitely, man, it's hard to say. This is the first look to me again, cocktail party, picnic, governor's ball, steeplechase. This is more, uh, country club. Yeah, that's what I'm looking. That's what I'm thinking. Country club look, tennis, tennis match look, you know, just, just something different, you know, just something different. And then later on in the evening, it's brandy, it's whiskey, it's bourbon, it's cigars. You can still stay with this look and you, you're doing something, you're doing something, right? Um, you know, as you all know, man, a lot of, a lot of, major deals go down outside of the boardroom, right? So being able to play in this type of environment, it means something. It means something because anybody can put on a suit Monday through Friday and talk that talk, especially if you've been trained, especially if you know what you're doing, you can talk that talk. But can you can you go to it? Can you be invited to the country club? And talk that talk in the casual setting and not put your foot in your mouth. That's a big deal to be able to do that. All right. And being able to dress the part. It's, it's going to help you. It's going to help you. It's definitely going to help you. All right. But let's start at the bottom, man. Because like I said, I really, I re I'm really digging this look. Once I put the guys like, yo, that's, that's fresh. I, I do that. I do that. So let's start at the bottom. Went with the white monk straps all right white monk straps now because of the sole because of the sole when you put these shoes on they almost wear like a dressy sneaker all right so instead of doing a crispy white leather sneaker which a lot of y'all may do because maybe you don't have this type of shoe in your arsenal which is understandable like some sometimes when it comes to shoes only i jump on something just for a whim just because i'm like yo that's dope i don't even know if i could do anything with it that's kind of how these white monk straps ended up in my arsenal all right and i've actually been able to use them quite a bit but white monk straps you see the socks you know i love my argyles argyle charcoal gray little royal blue a little bit of white all right scroll up this particular suit is a ralph ralph lauren suit all right uh gunmetal charcoal gray chalk very very subtle chalk white stripes again an essential to have in your closet it could be spring gray it could be charcoal gray it could be a hue of gray in between but a gray suit that's chalk stripe gives you options it's great for monday through friday saturday and sunday this is how you want to turn up or shall i say turn down with that same suit all right, like I said, Ralph Ralph Lauren suit, single vented, two button, you know, nothing too fancy, but just a clean look. All right, now when you want to turn it down, this is what you're talking about doing. You know, you break out the cream cricket sweater vest, the nice uh, collegiate style uh, motif uh, embroidered on the front here, navy blue chevron with the royal blue chevron on top. All right uh ribbed not ribbed and cable and then instead of a shirt and a tie we just take your favorite polo flip the collar now this one i did a navy and white because y'all know how i like i love i think it's a great idea whoever created this is a genius but i love cream with white i think they play well together they play real well together i added the navy the one with the navy collar instead of an all white um an all white polo just because i wanted to have so a little more color in it all right pocket square has a little extra pop of color with some orange in it but it's royal blue 
uh, Columbia blue with some orange in it. All right. Nothing too fancy, man. You know, you got your, you got your, uh, your regular tortoise shell, uh, shades or whatever the case may be. Sunglasses. You keep those, keep those on deck. You know, you can put them right in here behind your pocket square. Let the arm hang out. It's a vibe. It's a look. And you able to, you able to show the people that you do business with that, hey man, you know, I wear a suit Monday through Friday, but I can wear a suit on Saturday and still just be, you know, just as comfortable as anybody else is in in a pair of chinos with a polo shirt. Like, this is me. This is how I get down. Now, you want to talk business or what? Great, great vibe for that, man. Great vibe for that. You're in corporate America, right? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the feel. Doesn't matter the feel. You're in corporate America. And you're above and beyond productive. Like, you that guy. You that guy. Um, like, no real, no real issues or problems or anything to speak of. And like I said, you do, you do your job and you do it well, right? One of the senior partners comes into your office says you've been here for a while Parker um you know we got that such and such coming up it could be a merger it could be a potential acquisition whatever right we got such and such coming up all right I'm gonna need you to spearhead the presentation right and you like all right I got you no problem and they tell you, hey, listen, we doing this, right? We doing this on such and such date, uh, meeting at such and such in the morning. But then we linking up later on for, for this, that, and the third, right? All right. So you've already done your research. You got like your whole presentation, PowerPoints, everything is on point, right? There's no, there's no missing. There's no missing on this presentation. It's a done deal. But you typically, when you get off work, you typically go home, do whatever work you do from home. You know, you kind of keep work and home separate. Well, this time, you know, you have to have actually active actively participate after hours all right and come to find out whatever this deal is again like i said it's a merger or acquisition what it's an acquisition it's a merger it's a takeover whatever it is come to find out the old man ain't gonna be part of the presentation and i'm talking about the company that you're doing the presentation for the old man is not going to be part of the presentation is his uh his younger sons and or daughters or daughter right so it's the younger crew which is about your age you got them wrapped around your finger all right with this you got them wrapped around your finger with this now before we get into this look this is the same thing what I said with the two previous ensembles with the ensemble I'm wearing. A three-piece suit is a must-have, gentlemen. It's a must-have. If you are into suits or currently into suits or getting into suiting, a three-piece suit is a must-have. Right? You have to have a three-piece suit in your arsenal at least one. At least one. You can do solid navy. You can do solid gray. You could do a heavier fabric such as uh, uh, a flannel, a flannel, uh, flannel tweed herringbone, if you want to do that. But you have to have a three piece suit, which is suit trousers, suit jacket and waistcoat. OK, you don't have to have the waistcoat with the lapels. You don't have to have a chalk stripe. If you ain't ready, you ain't ready. But you have to have a three piece suit in your arsenal. Now, I want to tell you why. And because in this scenario, a three piece suit is what's going to get you over the top. I know. Sounds crazy. Right. Because, you know, you would hope you would get over the top strictly off your merits. Don't work like that. All right. 
let's start at the bottom okay and as we're looking at the bottom i'm going to break down how this suit how this look is going to get you over the top all right start at the bottom leather dress shoes only all right so the shanleys i'm wearing shanleys but i'm wearing the snuffs brown leather shanleys all right tassel loafers uh tassel loafers tend to be a bit slightly slightly a bit more casual in thought and in feel not necessarily aesthetic but in thought and in feel than a lace dress shoe all right but the reason we're able to wear our shanley loafers for this specific purpose is because we're dealing with the youngins and they don't know shit they don't know shit they don't know shit they know suit and tie dad make us wear a suit and tie otherwise they will they will try to be like google and the rest of them silicon valley motherfuckers and wear jeans and a t-shirt to work all the time but in corporate america you gotta wear a suit so because you're not dealing with the old man if you're dealing with the old man you break out a cap toe all right you break out a cap toe if you was dealing with the old man you'd have on a different tie all right if you was dealing with the old man you might wouldn't wear your purple label lilac french cuff dress shirt you would do white or you do columbia blue french cuff yes dress shirt yes spread collar yes but you wouldn't do lilac if you was dealing with the old man all right but because you know you're dealing with the sons and the daughter and you google the daughter and you got a little research on her and she look kind of hella good see what i'm saying now man you see what i'm talking about now shanley loafers brown leather socks purple goes with the color scheme that you got going on with this corporate navy all right now corporate navy that's a stretch because of the chalk stripe but hey listen man again it's, it's who we dealing with all right this bankers look this 20s 30s 40s bankers look 50s bankers look is what's going to take you over the top all right because as you can see when we in the meeting when we're in the early morning meeting we ditching the coat we ditching the coat why a couple of reasons one you found out the daughter just from you know peeking at her instagram a little bit you know she's early 30s so she still kind of you know she carry herself properly but you know she got a little wild streak you can see it because you know how to, you know how to peep it and she got a lot of pictures of her in various locations events vacations etc wearing a lot of purple so that's why you broke out the purple all right that's why you broke out the purple because you want the, the hues of purple because you want her staring you're going to take the coat off because you know you you've been in the gym you ain't walking around look like brock lesnar but you've been in the gym you know you got a couple of little cuts here and there and and you want that fragrance you want that that polo intense fragrance to really be able to come off when you're walking around that boardroom table and you pass her you want her to get a whiff she's already staring at the lilac you know her brothers are already intrigued by the fact that you just clean and fresh to death without being pretentious about it, right? Pocket Square, they ain't seen a Pocket Square, since, I mean a Pocket Square, sorry. They ain't seen a Pocket Watch since they great granddaddy. Like they don't even, like who is this dude? And then, and then you're talking, you're opening your mouth, you're educated, everything sounds good. They was taken in when they saw you. They was hooked. In their minds, they were all like, man, if he just, halfway present what i think he can do we we sold we good because this dude man i like him and a lot of times that's all that matters if the person like you and there's a way that they can make money too man they in right so the meeting jacket's off two-piece suit waistcoat lapels pocket watch pocket squares got purple in it chalk stripe suit is a suit is immaculate you even went with uh, your rugby Ralph Lauren pink and green, pink and green uh, uh, cufflinks. Cuff, fuck them. They don't understand. Like if the old man was there, you would have wore your monograms on a different colored shirt. It's them. They, they just they they totally intrigued and impressed at this point, right? Now that evening, dinner, brandy, 
sitting around talking, talking business, talking, talking formal, but talking more business than formal. The jacket's on, all right? The jacket's on at this point, all right? And it's still a look. It's still a vibe. You still look professional, but you comfortable. Like you comfortable. Your hands are like this when you're sitting down with your legs folded over, all right? Foot bopping a little bit so they so you can flex that sock. It's just those little, little subtle things like that. When people like you, it just it is that's what's gonna put you over the top. Get that get that 10, 10 figure deal inked. And now you're a partner, corner office. And the rest is history. And that's another episode in the books. Today we did suiting today, but we did it a lot different than typical suits. Um, we did it with intent. We did it with intent. We did it with intention. We did it with specifics. All right. The the ensembles. Um, maybe not the one I'm wearing, but the other three ensembles are specific to. Uh, our specific looks, I say specific looks. All right. Um, especially those first two, especially the first two. They were specific looks and all three of them, all three of them are. They're actually must have suits. The looks per se, you can you can interchange the looks. You can do what you want to do. You can keep it traditional if you want. That's totally OK. The looks were specific to certain things, certain needs or whatever. Right. But the particular suits that I used in, in, in all four looks are must have suits if you are up in your suit game. So in Mr. Anderson's case, per se, you know, you want you want to you want at least one suit that has some type of pattern to it, some type of off the beaten path, per se, pattern, which plaid would fall under. You you want a chalk stripe suit, all right, in a gray, whether uh, spring or darker or uh, navy or black. You want a three piece suit, at least one in your arsenal, because sometimes you just got to pull out the big guns and hit them with three pieces. Right. And depending on how you're built, you know, you hit them with three piece and take that top piece off that suit jacket. And hang it up somewhere nice and neat. And that two piece vest and, and, and suit trousers is just a, it's just a vibe. It does something. It does something to everyone around you, especially women. And, and a Glenn plaid suit. You got to have a Glenn plaid suit. Like if you don't have a Glenn, you could have, you could literally have 200 suits in your arsenal. If you don't have at least one Glenn plaid, you ain't in the game. And that's not, that's not an opinion. That's fact. I posted two pieces on YouTube, but I said I was on the post. I said I'd talk about these two pieces on this episode. So this is the first piece. All right, this is the first piece. It's a cashmere sweater, V-neck, polo blue label. <sighs> blue elbow patches. And let me double check to make sure because these glasses are dark and I apologize, I'm wrong. It's a brown, brown elbow patches. All right, a very dark chocolate brown elbow patches. This, this is a beautiful sweater. Tag says a size large. This is a snug medium, like a gentleman that's a medium could, could wear this sweater. A gentleman that's a small could wear this sweater. Um, <sighs> make me an offer. It's cashmere. Don't insult my intelligence. Make me an offer. Uh, this piece. Y'all see where the buttons are, right? Buttons are on the right side. But the problem is, is I'm a little bit concerned about how small this is with a size large written on it it doesn't look like to an untrained eye it doesn't look like it's cut with curvatures for women which a lot of rugby blazers are but to my eye it looks a little funny right the single vented it's rugby ralph lauren the buttons are on the men's side, but I swear, man, this large fits like somebody threw it in the washing machine 17 times 
on super hot heat and threw it in the dryer 17 times on on hot dry on steam dry because i swear this thing fits like a snug medium so the same gentleman that could wear the cashmere v-neck sweater a gentleman that wears a medium or small could wear this jacket as well um i'm gonna go ahead and say for the record that i think this is a men's piece um because of where the buttons are like i just never have known ralph lawrence since 1967 to deviate from the rule of the buttons right buttons men's buttons on the right side women's are on the left um rocky for example huge a huge uh fashionista stylist and women and collector of women's clothing i guarantee you she could walk into her extensive closet room and she doesn't have one blazer coat or shirt that is that was sold as women's with the buttons on the right side so I'm, I'm i'm thinking this is a man's but it's for sale also now like i told you those were purchases i made i didn't make those purchases because the price was so low that i just wanted to buy it and resell it it wasn't about that because i don't do that i bought those for me the sweater was an ebay purchase when i got the sweater tried it on and it took me like 30 minutes to get out of the sweater without tearing it up because that motherfucker just and I when I pulled it out of the bag I was like I'm looking at it and can tell it's too small so I contacted the seller I said brother I don't know if you or the previous owner I don't know where you got the sweater from don't care but this sweater has been washed 16,000 times because it's two sizes too small they reminded me that they had measurements in the list so i went back and looked at the original listing there were no measurements in the listing the measurements was the last three pictures had a tape measure laying on top of the sweater so i i took the l on that one i didn't respond i just left feedback um i did leave positive feedback but i told the truth the sweater was two sizes too small but i'm stuck with it thanks because they didn't want to take a refund. Um, but that that jacket. That jacket caused an uproar in my in my life. So when that jacket came, I pulled it out of the bag. Same look on my face like. Tried it on. I only tried on one arm. I was like, yeah, man, ain't, ain't even no point. And this is back to back purchases now. This is back or back, back to back deliveries. One was one day, one was two days later. So supremely disappointed, right? It's an understatement. Went back to the, uh, this was Poshmark. Went back to the original listing. No, no nothing. No measurements, no nothing. Now, on Poshmark, you have to accept the delivery. If you don't accept it in a couple of days, they they let loose the person's money anyway. But when you accept it, then that's when they typically uh, release the uh, funds to the vendor. Uh, obviously, I ain't accept it. So contacted the vendor. I say, listen, I don't know what happened. I asked you, was this a ladies or a man's? And you said it was a man's. Um because looking at it in the picture i was the same thing i talked about with the curvature it just looked like it could have you know it just looked like i don't know i don't know but the buttons again it was the buttons the buttons were on the man's side and just never ever having seen ralph deviate from that rule i just was confident enough to say you know what i it's a man's and i and i do believe it's a man's i just don't know how in the hell because I, well, I do know, and I'm gonna tell you how. Some people just believe in the washing machine. And you put your hands on a rowing blazer like that, that feels like fleece. You might say, okay, well, this is like my favorite sweatshirt from college, so I'm gonna throw this in the washer. I, and I think that's what happened. Anyway, back to contacting the vendor. I said, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to send this back. So she didn't even respond to me the the response ended up being 
such and such, whatever her name was, which I wouldn't give her the, the fucking, I wouldn't give that bitch the fucking free publicity. Um, such and such has escalated the case. Please, uh, please wait for Poshmark's support team to respond or something. Paraphrase. So the Poshmark team responded maybe three, four, five hours later. Uh, vendors, and I'm paraphrasing again, vendors don't have to accept returns if um, b based on sizing or anything like that. So I responded. So basically, I'm stuck with it. Note it. And that's what I said. And then as soon as I hit send, I took all of my stuff off Poshmark for sale. I deleted my Poshmark. Oh, I left. I accepted it and left feedback. And my feedback, and this is verbatim without even having it in front of me. I don't have it in front of me because I no longer have Poshmark and I'm not going to have Poshmark. But uh, verbatim, what I said was item was two sizes too small. Uh, vendor refused to take responsibility for uh, not having measurements listed and just stating that it was a men's large and Poshmark took her side so I'm stuck with the item don't buy from this vendor deleting Poshmark and that's exactly what I did uh, Poshmark hasn't been the greatest lately as far as items concerned which you know, that's a that's a roller coaster of a thing because sometimes Poshmark is up while eBay is down. But lately it's been eBay's up and been staying consistent and Poshmark has been down and been staying consistent. Like I haven't I haven't seen anything worth worth of note. And I like and a lot of times I use I only use Poshmark for the rugby, rugby Ralph Lauren items. Uh, occasionally you'll catch a great blue label piece, occasionally a great purple label or a great double RL. But I mainly use Poshmark for the rugby pieces and it just hasn't been much on there. This was one of the things that caught my eye, especially for the price. Um, but yeah, I took it off. I took it off all of my all of my devices. I took Poshmark off all of my devices. I sent all of their emails to spam. It, they'll be fine without Mr. Parker. And, and if you guys want to continue to uh, patronize Poshmark, you can but when a buyer that's one thing i respect about ebay as i've, I've obviously i've been a vendor i've sold whew, i've sold quite a few pieces on ebay as a vendor but i've definitely been more of a of a buyer than i have been a vendor on ebay but one thing i respect even as a vendor is that uh ebay buyer protection is a big deal and they stand behind the buyer. Now, you ain't going to just be able to get away with shit. But they stand behind that buyer. They do. Um, I told the story of the Rugby Ralph Lauren uh, shawl collar that I bought with the R and the wings on it. Where it came and there was there's white trimming on the shawl collar on the sleeve and on the uh, ribbed waist. And there was bleeds all over the white and i got the most of it that i could out but when i contacted the vendor contacted the vendor several times and they responded a couple of times but never did send um the partial refund which is all i was asking was for a partial refund so when they didn't i opened the case contacted ebay the vendor never responded i got all of my money back so i got the sweater for free and i was able to get most of the stains out like I said, eBay protects the buyer, and I appreciate that as a buyer, and I appreciate it as a seller on eBay. But Poshmark, this is the first time I, this is the first time I ever had to open a case against Poshmark. Well, this was the first time I ever had have have I didn't open a case. This is the first time I've ever had an issue on Poshmark, and for them to just hit me with that bullshit when this this person, this hoe was was clearly a, a, a shit vendor and just trying to get rid of some shit. And trust me when I tell you, she's just trying to get rid of some shit because the price she was asking and the offer I made 
uh one she accepted it quickly and it was so far off the price she was asking i knew it was just like when i started putting everything together and then like i said got the piece and it was two sizes too small it's like no wonder you accepted my lowball offer you just try to get that shit out your damn closet oh that's fine it'll move because like i said it's a nice piece if it was my size it, it wouldn't be a discussion that's a nice ass rowing blazer the double striping the striping on the collar the striping under the collar the logo it's a nice piece it's just too damn small it's just too damn small no it just looks it still gives me the vibe like it could have been a woman's if they wanted it to be but it, like i said i'm sticking by the traditions of ralph lauren and the fact that those buttons are on the man's side something else happened with that jacket something else happened i personally think some idiot threw it in the washing machine and it shrunk but those pieces are for sale so if anybody wants them if you if you feel like you it'll fit you if you are a like i said if you are a medium if you're a true medium, either one of those pieces will fit. If you're a small, either one of those pieces will fit because that is a those are both snug mediums. So they'll fit. And as far as the jacket and I'm sure the sweater as well, but definitely as far as the jacket is concerned, there's room to take it out. So if you're a medium, but not a snug medium, you could take that jacket out enough to where it's a medium and it fits perfect. All right. Uh, Anyway, let me know. There, uh, it's, it's on this episode. I'll be posting them in my Instagram until they go, until I can move them. I'm really just trying to get what I paid for them back. But, you know, if I can make a couple $20, $30 here and there for my pain and suffering, for my disappointment, because I had to pivot. Well, the, the jacket was just a piece to add, but the, the sweater was supposed to go with those velvet pants from last week. So I have to, had to completely pivot as far as what I was going to do with those velvet pants. And I'm running out of time to try to get those on and style, you know, uh, as far as a wear now ensemble before I put them up and then and then try to catch the damn matching suit jacket for the uh, velvet pants by fall, which that's going to happen, too. Um. Uh, but yeah, if I can make a couple twenty, thirty, thirty dollars for my pain and suffering and my disappointment, then that's a good thing too. So I'm not going to tell you what I paid for it, but I am just trying to get back what I paid for it. So if, if you like them, hit me up or whatever. Um, I would love for y'all to boycott Poshmark. I think that's a shitty. I think that's a shitty deal to shit on a shit on a, a, a customer like that. So. Do what you feel, do what you must, but I'm done with Poshmark. I will not be using Poshmark. Now, with that said, I'm not stupid. If one of y'all see the big, the big uh, rugby kicker or the Indian head sweater or the grandpa bear, the grandpa bear sweater in any of the colors or, or any of those uh, interpretations, of the grandpa bear sweater then y'all see one of those on poshmark for 100 150 dollars or something hit a brother up you know i log in as a guest to try to grab it but you know if you see one of them pieces and 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 it's it's a thousand dollars you know, don't bother me i'm not interested no i'm not paying an arm and a leg for any of those pieces only the big kicker can still hold my attention at a thousand dollars and i don't want to pay that for it all right anyway what y'all think about the episode, man? Specific suiting for specific spring and pre-spring outings and events. Y'all let me know what y'all thought, man. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. And tell a friend. Because we here. Suited and booted and boycott and Poshmark. You heard? <laughs> Artists paint pictures. Haters paint narratives. So don't be a hater. Y'all have a good one.